Welcome back to the Great Aussie Build-Off. This episode, we've got Ian back again, uh, and we're gonna be tackling all of our engine modifications. So we've uh, had a little bit of a chat to Ian and his other LS mates, and we've all concurred that the engine's actually gonna have to come off the K-frame because some of the parts we've ordered, being the LS noob that I am, we do need to modify uh, the oil pump pickup. And in order to do that, you have to remove the sump because I'm no gynecologist. So we'll be pulling that off and putting it on a stand. So it's gonna be heaps easier to work on. Um, but now we're gonna be pulling off the sump, the timing cover, uh, the inlet manifold, cylinder heads. So basically we'll be left with a bare short block. And once we do that, we're gonna be sorting all of our goodness out. Uh, we have had some parts already turn up, so um, we're gonna pretty much dive straight in. We're gonna be pulling the camshaft out. Um, I think for simplicity's sake, we just start with the cam, do the lifters. Um, also, I wanna get the lifters out of the box and start them soaking in oil. Yep. I'm not sure if that's a LS thing, but I'd like to do that anyway. Hopefully by the end of the day, we'll have a completely reassembled engine. And if all things go well, we'll even have it back on our K-frame. So let's get back into it. I love it when coolant just always falls out of engines. And it just never stops. Never, ever. Do you want to pump up the jam a little bit, Ian? Go, son. Is it going to clear the car? Is it going to clear the car? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on Is it going to clear on. the car? No, nah, but you've got fine. heaps bigger problems first. Nah, I'll be fine, bro. Just checking the tensile strength of the wiring harness. <laughs> You can see the Gen 3 pattern is still in the top. You would so think... this doesn't exist, does it? None nope. of this shit's here. Because it's literally... Because these are the lifters that they kill mm. for DOD. So this supplies oil to those lifters yeah. if they're DOD lifters, yeah. right? So it basically drops half the cylinders. Yeah. Um, because basically they've got like a standard lifter bucket and the DOD lifter's like half the height. It's got this spring. Mm. And it's actually the spring that just allows the lifter to Flat wobble around. around like a phallus in a sock. Mm. And um, that, that's what kills it. More cool aid, just when you thought we'd have seen enough. Yeah, straight in the That'd just make my life. <laughs> just sploosh, wet socks for everyone. Do you want a rag? Can I have a rag, you? please? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> so my soy sauce fingers don't stain the floor. This is the part where we find out I left a bolt in somewhere. It's generally, this is the point where it happens. That's why you take it off from the bottom, kids. Unless you're me. Oh, and good. then you just bloodbath your parents' garage. Shout out to Ray and Meredith. It's like guaranteed going to be gone down to degrees of town. I would always, I would rather coolant than, uh, than trans fluid or diff fluid every day of the week. Depends if it's manual gearbox oil or ATF. Go away! <laughs> Cotty's is just making a mint. Oh good, there's more. Yeah. These two bits here are going to get slotted. This pipe has an O-ring and if you move the pump forward, the pipe doesn't seat properly in the pump that's actually quite a problem because then you get all kinds of oil, oil pressure problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to slot the mounting holes and that will allow us to basically move the pump forward slightly to fit the timing chain, which is an upgrade to suit the camp.
at least with it being upside down, you're on the you're not pulling on the thrust side like as if it was still in the car. That's why it's always safer to roll your Commodore over when you do your cam. When home. you do your cam, and then just get some friends with a forklift to flip it back on its wheels once you're done. That's good advice. Yeah, you look at me go. There you go. It's not. It's got bad, a lot so. of duration, but not a lot of lift. No. And, and these things standard run about almost like 120 LSA, which is why they sound like they've got a cam that's basically just a broomstick. It's Christmas time, we've got presents. Yo, yo! Let's rip into them. Got a rear main assembly. Got some new metal straws. Head bolt set, power bond balancer kit, crank bolt, some other bolts, and we've got a double row timing chain, which is Australian made. Oil filter, some ignition leads, uh, sparkulators, plugs, and front crank seal. Womp stick. The broom Womp handle stick. must still be on order. You've practically got a broom handle with the stock cam. It's not telescopic though. I don't know what this is though. Gasket kit. You know that you've got yourself a rad part when it comes with a bright red sticker. Yes. <laughs> this doesn't look like a bag of oranges. <laughs> Can't take you anywhere. <laughs> hey kids, you want some fresh LS7 lifted? <laughs> yeah. Well, they're individually bagged. Yeah. That's snazzy. Why is the sticker not in the sticker drawer? I didn't know you had a sticker drawer. I'm not angry, bro. I'm disappointed. That's okay, so are my parents. Putting it in the sticker drawer. The lifter push rod rides in that socket, just here. And it pushes up and down, and that rides on the cam lobe. Nope. Dear Marv, I've had enough. Stop prattling on about push rods and camshafts in the block. Regards the internet. Huh. That means there's air in them, right? Yep. So is it good that we put it in there? Look, I say yes. Some people say no. Is the rule to not look at cam bearings in an LS? Isn't that the sloppy mechanics joke? Yeah. Well, they definitely look like cam bearings. There are cam bearings in there. Yeah. Far out, the lobes are so close to those bearings, eh? Yep. We have cam in, cam dialed, and we've made sure all the lift is within the specs from the cam sheet. The next part is, because we've gone to a double row timing chain, you actually need to clearance the inside of the factory timing cover slightly. So we just dummied the cover back on the front of the motor, spun it over a couple of times, which then gives us a couple of witness marks, which we can then see exactly where we need to clearance. So Benny's gonna get artistic with the flat disc. So these lumps here are basically the timing sinks for the engine. On a Gen 3, so like an LS1, the cam wheel is actually all smooth because the cam sensor for the LS1 is in the back of the engine. On a Gen 4, it's in the front on the timing cover. And yeah, this is a Rollmaster double row timing chain. The reason we went double row is just because we don't know how spicy the challenges are going to get. So we thought a little bit of extra protection, that'd be great. Factory oil pump back on and she's good to go.
head gaskets. This is Hylomar, it's a, uh, basically an adhesive that goes on head gaskets. There's reasons to use it and reasons not to not use it. Personally, I like to use it on any MLS type head gasket. So basically you just give it a, a light spray, you're not supposed to drown it in this Hylomar and just leave it to sit for five minutes. It's almost like a contact adhesive. Should send these to Shaquille O'Neal so he can put his shoes away. <laughs> One shoe. Yeah. That is quite the cylinder head, Ian. Mm. This way, you don't have to wait for your heads to be machined and cleaned and hot mm. tanked and stuff. You've already got valve springs that are not gonna wilt under the awesome raw thumping power of your upgraded camshaft. New seals. And, and it's all brand new too. There's no no mess, no fuss. Second hand, no remanufacture, and given which is also fine. But well, you, you at least know where you're at. You don't know what the history of this Ute has been and how many times. Like it might have split a radiator and tank ten years ago and overheated this engine to a levity four times. Yeah, and the heater and the cylinder head cores and are no good. Yeah, well, I have seen that before. It's unfortunate, but it does happen. Three hundred and twenty cubic feet of air a minute. So they rated up. Yep, factory heads. Read the instructions, kids. Put your goo on. Here we have a Benny raging at belts in his natural habitat. The rage flows strongly through him and out through his digits. Close. Now is not a time to approach or to mess with him.
Sure. Are you excited? Little Gary the Hose. Oh yeah, I'm bloody pumped. Yeah, that's uh, no sick. Worries. Yeah, thanks for that. Love being back in my little okay, home. No While Ian's uh, putting that last header into the engine bay now, I've uh, jumped back onto eBay and started looking for the next uh, bits for the project. We've uh, now decided we're actually going to put uh, the Redline SSV Brembo four pots on the front. So I've actually found a set here on eBay and the good thing about eBay is it's not necessarily always brand new stuff. So I've actually found a pretty good priced uh, set of secondhand calipers that look more or less as new. Um, it is just the, the calipers themselves though, so we'll have to find some uh, brand new discs, but we'll uh, no doubt find some DBA discs on there as well. Well, it's been a challenging couple of days for both myself and Ian. Um, we've both been tested mentally and our patience definitely been pushed at points. But uh, we've finally got the engine and bell housing back in the car, all the subframes in. Our engine's obviously completely assembled. We did fit our white line front sway bar while the front cross member was apart. I've jumped back on eBay and ordered uh, an exhaust Bilstein shocks with King Springs, but we'll uh, definitely be uh, buttoning this thing up next episode and it will be running. Fingers crossed. So uh, I think it's time to go home. Beer, 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 beer. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.